show. Tomorrow's 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 show. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Hello. We're finale. Back. We're back. Season finale. Yep. It's Sunday. It Sunday. Is. Time Sunday, for the tomorrow Sunday, show. Sunday. Time for the tomorrow show. I'm just uh posting a little bit of that live we did from the couch at the tree house. And you know, the tomorrow show, it's what's up. On the Hope for Us Network. Um, how you doing? How you doing, AC? I'm chilling, man. How are you? You good? Uh, you yeah, I excellent. Mean, a little soreness on my arm. Are you gonna turn him up? Yeah. Turn him up. Turn him up in my headphones. We uh, turn him up. No, turn headphones. up. I can't hear myself in my snare. Uh, <laughs> I can't hear myself from my snare. <laughs> You, AC is referring to the fact that we got our boosters. Yeah, we, so, uh, we got sore arms. Yeah. Sore arms, but, you know. the coffee helped. The coffee helps all the time. Where are you at, AC? I'm in, I'm in my safe place, my studio. Yeah. My home bedroom studio where I just uh, create stuff and music. And, uh, yeah, beautiful music. You and I made some music the other night. We sure did. And uh, it it nourished my body and my soul. Made me feel better. Made me feel less hopeless. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I already talked to Marlo on the phone and kind of mentioned – what we were thinking. Marlo from Kaguama C Dramas, also on the Hope for Us Network. Amazing person. Um, we just, me and AC were working on a tune, and as we were doing so, we felt it would benefit from some non male, um, you know, perspectives and uh, artists having an outlet together. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, excited. We'll probably be able to, you know, after the finale, which is today. We'll be able to take some time for ourselves. Uh, everybody at the network will be able to, you know, kind of put put some time into things that they're passionate about, whether that be resting or you know working on some music. And uh, then we'll be coming back refreshed towards the end of summer with a new season of programming. So that's yeah. kind of cool. It's like the first uh, the first like kind of era of our our television network here, where we're trying to provide you know, entertainment, but also resources and education and, uh, you know, some connection. Yeah. Some community. So really glad to have you all here in our home, the tree house and AC's home, the beat lab is safe space. And, uh, yeah, we're glad you could join us today is Sunday, June 26th. Doesn't it feel like time is flying? Yeah. 2022. Feels like time is flying. Yeah. I just always think of how, like, my, I have a bunch of really good friends who all have a birth, their birthday next month, the end of July. So they're all like Leos. And it's like, bam, 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 bam. So I was just thinking of them when you said the 26th. Yeah. It's like all that same week. 
It's coming up. Crazy. We're going to go on a trip, our first air flight since the pandemic. That's true. We are going to do that. Um, Yay. What, what are you all looking forward to this summer in Twitch, in our Twitch community? Twitch land. Uh, feel free to fire off. Oh, hi, Gabby. Hi, Gabby. What are you guys looking forward to this summer? Some hikes, some trips, some adventures, some uh, barbecues, swimming. Ooh, it's been yes. hot. It's been hot. So. <laughs> Seeing the ocean. Uh, I'm excited to see the ocean. God damn, am I excited to see the ocean? I'm excited to see old growth forest too. Mm. Yeah, the we're we're traveling to California, going going back back to Cali. Yeah. Cali. Oh, I was like, why are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna be in Big Sur. So uh, if you don't know what Big Sur is, camping it's sounds great. Pretty special. Uh, actually, gonna be able to. Um, Really get a heavy dose of nature on the program today. Uh, I, my our, be our best friend is actually camping right now, so I was went to feed his cats last night. Yes, indeed. Shout and out, I, Todd. I just, to, I just have to show you this picture of his cat. Oh, he sent it to you. Just sent it to Scott. It's okay. No, you want to just do it like that? Oh yeah, low low budge. <laughs> yes. Look at that little fluffer. She's just like the fluffiest, sweetest little thing. And then his other cat was just hiding the whole time. I couldn't get him to come out. Behind the Gabby chair, B but... knows what's up. Been hiking pretty much everywhere, but no surprise. Also, Big Sur. Yeah. Our boy Scott, who's going to be on the program later, talking about being the behind the scenes magician that makes a lot of this programming happen. Uh, he's going to look forward to going to the beach and getting some camping in if the heat does not kill us. It has been very hot in Chicago as well, my man. I know it's a different kind of heat. Yeah, but it's it's weird though. There's lots of it's lot lots of heat waves. So oh damn, yeah. damn. Hey, see, um, yeah. you camp? No. Have you ever? Have you, have yeah. You ever? Have you ever gone? Uh. No. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like. Yo, and it's like uh, the closest, uh, like truthfully, the closest I've come to camping is like, going, like, like touring, being on tour. Yeah, yeah, sleeping like, in the van. Uh, sleepy. We we played this like festival, uh, uh, in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, like <laughs> Slippery Rock Dunes. It's beautiful. It's crazy. Sounds awesome. And uh, that's about as close to camping that. I've really ever come. Like, never really like slept in a tent outside. Just you're always welcome to come with us if you like. No, I'm no. (laughs) Yeah, I was taught. That's it's funny because like, like if you don't grow up with it, maybe I I uh, was talking to some of my coworkers about that, and they were like, no, there were two two of my coworkers who were like, no, I I don't want to sleep outside like it freaks me out and i was like it's it's safer probably than like the city is but they, they they're just the city like bash they're just like really nervous about it and i was like i wouldn't you're scared of the wild i was like i wouldn't skip it like i would try it at least once like sleeping sure. under the stars or something but well, and, and so but i get it too and the thing is is that like even like growing up i had like friends that would like invite me out on camping trips and i'd be like no nah, i'm good i don't want to or like there would be like sleepovers where like they would set up tents in the back yeah sure and like i'd just be like no nah, i don't i don't i don't want to i'm good but yeah. when you said like like sleeping underneath the stars i have done the hammock overnight Ooh, Ooh tight you, hammocks dude you hammock. the hammock overnight and uh, that's a cool thing to fall asleep to. Yeah, I love the like, I love the sound of the trees and the owls and the all the little noises you hear. I love that. Yeah, I, I feel like Gabby says, like I feel so at peace out there. It's so awesome, but it definitely is different. Plus, all the fresh air, all that fresh air, you start getting all like, you know, at the end of the day or the evening, you're just like. 
you're ready to just knock out. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and you can you can do glamping. I bet you would like some glamping, bro. You I don't know what know glamping what, is? I have no idea what that is. It's like glamorous camping. You get like a cabin or you get like a, a RV, yurt. like a sick ass RV. Or a yurt. You you say that just makes me think of um a Parks and Rec episode where they like all went out camping. And I'm um uh, I'm, into it. I'm into it. I can't remember his name. His his character in the show is he's uh aziz's character tom have a bird oh good job a whole, like tv setup microwave yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah treat yourself treat yourself and like ran out the battery of like ron swanson's truck so they couldn't get back or something crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh thank you gabby um talk, talk about your hair when we were watching the opening i was like man my hair has changed a lot I've always changed my hair a lot since I was a kid. My mom had short hair and that was really crazy for women at some points, you know, like what you have short hair, but she always, ha she always kept it short. So I had, I'd get a lot of haircuts with her and try stuff out. Um, but recently I had heard about color correcting teal hair with, pink or purple and so i tried that with some pastel purple i had just left over and it just kind of turned this weird periwinkle and i was like all right cool yeah she's like a mermaid yeah and i cut it a little bit um might cut it some more why do you why do you think changing your hair is like uh kind of an expressive coping kind of thing that you've developed or you were relied on maybe throughout your life. I just like the choices, I guess. Yeah. And for me, it's like not that big of a deal. I think that people who don't cut their hair a lot, it's like, a, it's a big deal. You know, yeah. they're like, Oh my God, I cut off four inches. And I'm like, eh, but <laughs> that's just cause I've done it a lot. Sure. But I think I just like the choices. I just like get kind of, I don't know if I get bored, but I'm like, I want to try that. I want to try that so yeah i mean it's, it's cool it's like when people tattoo themselves or uh you know even wearing adornments such as jewelry fine jewels maybe yeah. perhaps a chain or two yeah your chain looks good totally. dude. or Talking like you ac or like 13. Thank what's you. that or like 13. 13. yeah you know, the reason why i say that before we went on i, I was Excuse me, I was briefly talking about this new Diddy Bad Boy documentary or whatever that's out. Oh yeah. And like in the like he's giving us like pep talk before they go out on stage or something backstage. Yo, know, my man seriously has like 13 or 14 huge, like huge, like re like ridiculously, <laughs> like like all right, that's 25 pounds right there. Just like like Slick Rick didn't even wear that much, but he had a lot of chains. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get so. <laughs> no, 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 man. When you when you say Slick Rick, though, I think of like just like a massive amount of over the top gaudy jewelry. That's like he's he's just like not to be beat. Yeah, you know what I mean. More than Slick Rick, I swear it was. Yeah, crazy. well, it's it is Diddy. It is Diddy. Hey, Minnie. What did what did you say about him earlier? He's like uh, he, he's like the John Cougar Mellencamp of, <laughs> of hip hop. Yeah, because he keeps changing his name. <laughs> Think about it. At, at first, it was what Puff Daddy. Then sure. it was then it was P Diddy. Then it was Diddy. Then it, then he was what Can Sean Combs. Sean Combs yeah. for a little bit. Puffy. Puffy. Then just Diddy. You're right. And I like, think Club Love or like something like that. I don't know, dude. Oh, yeah, that was just like was, what he was Because he was hosting the Grammys, right? Minnie shows. So Minnie has some swag on. I got her this What's up, swag? little bandana with rainbows on it. On the other yeah, side, this is Love Wins. Should I do the Zoom? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Do the Zoom. 
check out this technology. Yeah. Damn, hit him with the zoom. Yeah. Yeah. So hit him with the zoom. So yeah, she's all she's all for pride and Minnie, you Love. are the best. You are the best. You're the best. Oh, your breath is <laughs> terrible. Uh, uh, um, so Scramsky, you had yeah. a car camping setup uh, that like helped to nurture your soul, I'm sure, quite a bit when you were going through chemo. Like you had to go through chemotherapy at such a young age. We'll talk about that a little bit. But um, yeah, man, car camping is pretty sweet when you like think about what you can customize for yourself in your personal space, like, like your car or, uh, you know, whatever, like get like a special kind of setup for you where you're going to just be out there. And, uh, sometimes that solitude is, is where you can find that peace. And sometimes going out with a, a person that'll be your ride or die. That's just the ticket to it's just what you need. Um, Remember when we were car camping and we got stuck in the sand? <laughs> Do I? We were, uh, we were like Grover Beach, right? We were like, oh, yeah, go up there. It'll be fine. It and was night. We waited too long. And we just fucking, place. it was a little Prius and we just got caught in the sand. Oh, in the Prius it. too? It, it, was in, it was an old Ruby, the rocket. Oh, <laughs> oh red man. Prius. Yeah. We got a super, we bought them down in that car all the time. Is that a super low? Well, I mean, clearance. we were bottomed out regardless. We basically drove up this hill into a like sand dune and just went, <laughs> and so then uh, we ended up pitching the tent like right outside of our car <laughs> until somebody came to be like, "You can't, you can't camp here," and we're like, "No shit, we got stuck." <laughs> all right, so dumb. <laughs> no shit, can you help move us? Yeah, please. We're help. stuck. That was wild. Yeah. That was wild. Then we went. We went and drove a whole shitload more. Drove all the way back. That was a Hope Travels journey. Yeah. And uh, that was uh, definitely a, a cool idea that Carl had uh, back in back in the old days at the old country. So I'm really uh, psyched to do something like that again um, on behalf of the Hope for Us Network and do some traveling. Um, but today you're going to go on a couple journeys with us. We're going to we're going to talk about a couple of things that got us through the last couple of weeks, some silly internet things that you can enjoy with us. We're going to do a new installment of uh, Nature is Amazing. And so are you. Uh, where we're going to take you to a really special place that has earthly treasures. I'll keep it at that. Mysterious. Ooh. Yeah. And then um, we're going to do another installment of Searching for Goodness. Woo! Searching for goodness is going to be a, a humdinger. <laughs> uh, we we went to a very special, very personal uh, cultural experience. Mm -hmm. Also mysterious. Uh -huh. You'll see. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You'll see. It's going to be awesome. And then, uh, you know, to round out this fine program, this season finale of The Tomorrow Show, we're going to bring the man behind the scenes up front out into the spotlight <laughs> yeah. so that's gonna be really great we're gonna hang out and talk i don't know if he's feeling it he might even hop in here early we'll see he controls everything he controls all scramsky yeah. <laughs> scramsky so oh boy here we go yeah. so i know that we talked about hair helping you cope over yeah. the last couple weeks i know we talked a little bit about um just like in general, the fact that going out in nature can be helpful. We haven't gotten to do that in a little bit, but we did experience a little outside time um, recently, which you'll see in a moment. But uh, what else? You want to see some of these silly internet things? Yeah. Okay. Silly internet things. All right. So the first video is a dog video. Yeah. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Uh, but it's a dog video. video that makes me laugh fucking every time. And laughter, scientifically speaking, is a valuable ammunition against bad thoughts. It produces uh, really, really nice things in your brain um, rather than like adrenaline and cortisol and things that make you feel kind of aggro. 
Um, so this next clip uh, is that dog clip, and it's really short. And let's let it repeat a couple times because uh, you may have seen it. It's really fun. So how, how about that? I'm dead again. I'm up. I can run faster than a bitch around the house. I'm alive. I'm dead. I'm watching TV. I'm looking at you. Fuck you. I'm dead again. I'm up. I can run faster than a bitch around the house. I'm alive. I'm dead. I'm watching TV. I'm looking at you. Fuck you. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm up. I'm around the house. I'm alive. That's perfect. I'm, dead. I'm watching TV. Well, you know. Maybe go save that for yourself when you're feeling a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. And uh, just watch it on loop until you're what like, why doing? was I upset? <laughs> oh, he's so fun. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Oh. All right. What else? What else oh, do we so have good. here? Um, I should check my notes. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I don't know. What, what do we got next, Scott? You just pull it up. Goodness <laughs> <was> gracious. <laughs> This is just some funny shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, this yeah. is this is something that uh, my partner shared to me, and uh, it's not it's not like often that um, you're able to be in a relationship where you can kind of like just be on the same team and trying to like better each other um, without getting butt hurt and stuff. It's kind of like a hard thing to do sometimes. <laughs> yes. Um, but like this is like such a great like thing to remind ourselves of, especially the highlighted portions, which I will read. Partnership is giving, taking, learning, teaching, offering the greatest possible benefit while doing the least possible harm. It's very, very important. Partnership is a mutualistic symbiosis. Partnership is life. Any entity, any process that cannot or should not be resisted or avoided must somehow be partnered. Partner one another. Partner diverse communities. Partner life. Partner any world that is your home. Partner God if that's your thing. Only in partnership can we thrive, grow, change. Only in partnership we live. So you sent that to me. It was words I needed to hear to feel less hopeless. Yeah. Um, because the last uh, couple weeks or a couple years, depending on how, how you look at it, have been difficult so um yeah i don't know what earth seed the book books of the living uh is all about but it's from that and uh maybe i'll i'll look into that further you know i think i've seen other stuff from that before but well yeah. it's just like opportunities to learn about new things on the internet um sometimes aren't held in in the same kind of value as information once was because of the saturation there's, in, there's all the information is there. So, like, I feel like we don't value, like, the value has, like, depreciated on, like, good, helpful information on the Internet, you know? So, uh, this, this was a good reminder of that. And, uh, man, partnership is life. I love uh, working on music with you, AC. It's, that's a partnership. And we thrive and grow and change together as we as we do it. I like the part that isn't highlighted. The partnership is mutualistic symbiosis. Hell yeah, I love a good symbiosis, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. That yeah, that's a good one. That won't that won't get you thinking. It'll get you scratching your noggin. You know, scratch, scratch, scratch. Um, what's next? I think what's next is. Another silly dog video. Surprise. Is it, is Surprise. It but I, no, it's not 2D this time. It's another one I, I, I learned about chowder. Unless I'm skipping something. Scott, just put up whatever was next in the in the in, in the uh, media folder itinerary. Yeah, it's she oh it's Chef Amari. Okay, okay. Oh my God. Yeah, oh, Chef so Amari, the chocolate master. Check this out. You're gonna find me. You won't see. You look yummy too. Oh come on! Yeah. Bro, wait. <laughs> just wait. No, no. Come on, man. Look 
that shit. You're like, what? Yeah. That was like some little dark. Little dark, oh, man. Man. He's very good. Ah! He's very good. Yeah. Never Mari. Come on, man. What? Can you believe that shit? I know. Oh, my God. I know. You ever yeah, see so anything that like guy, it? That guy does... Um, there's a show on Netflix called uh, School of Chocolate. School of Chocolate. But even before he was doing that show, he was uh, doing this these kind of videos. And he'll do, there's one I saw where it's like almost, he, he builds almost a life-size giraffe. Oh, maybe not quite. It's but massive. It's like a baby giraffe. giraffe out of chocolate. Yeah. Um, it, but it, he does just amazing chocolate things like that. He also yeah. likes to... And he's really into how it tastes, too. So, like, you know it probably it still tastes good. But, like, he, like, will build contraptions. Oh, there's that. Yeah, oh, what? Yeah, there's that chocolate giraffe, bro. Yeah, a baby giraffe. Dude, you know, hey, y'all know whose party he's probably done? Yeah, Puff, say. Puffy. Diddy Combs. I bet yeah. he has. <laughs> <laughs> That's some Diddy Combs shit right there. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, go, come eat my giraffe chocolate. Yeah, he's. Oh, the snail! <laughs> Come on, man. It's, it's, he's pre- he's pretty wild. I I uh, I implore all of you to check out this chef because he Whoa. is wild. And the show School of Chocolate, he's very oh my God, that's cool. kind. Yo, yo what's he, that on? He's, so, a, he's a gentle dude, and the way that so he kind, like, yeah. it's a competition show, but it's also like intended to have the format of being at school. So they're like taking a course. Yeah, so even if you like lose a um a challenge, a challenge you don't get kicked out, you stay the whole time. And he'll even like really help he'll kind of give you like private tutoring. Yeah, that part was really cool. So hey, yeah, Aaron, uh, oh, Aaron, dude. Where, where, where can I watch this? Netflix. Netflix. It's on oh word? Yeah, it's and cool actually chocolate. a friend of mine knew somebody who was on it. Yeah, yeah, it was a Jose. Get out of here. Jose, yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a homie from Chicago. So that it that was like who told us to watch it, and then we were like, "Whoa!" It makes you want to do stuff too. It makes you want to like think about what you can make with chocolate. Because like, I don't know, man. That was the thing. He was just very like encouraging. He was like, "You can you can do this wild shit. Yeah. You just need the or like need even, to be taught even, how to do it. You know, yeah, and he demo it." Chocolate. Even even how to make stuff not out of chocolate. Like, yeah, he has true. all these like good ideas. I don't know. Yeah, engineering Oof. almost like with chocolate, which is pretty wild. But he had all these tricks that he showed them. Like he'd demo it out and be like, "Now nah, you're gonna do it," and then they'd have to you know figure it out. So yeah, Chef Amari. But I I think the other the other thing was uh oh do do a cat zoom in do a cat zoom in real quick. Get him! Yeah, he's got a little. Little chin. Look at his little chin. He loves his uncle AC. Yeah. Yeah. That that feels nice. Meow. Meow. Cool. And uh keeping with the animal uh animal love. This is Chowder, I think, the skateboarding bulldog, yeah? Oh. Uh which makes me pretty happy chowder. anytime I see it. I think his name's Chowder. Yeah, there he is. Nice learning. Well, even if he's trying a hill for the first few times, and he's had a couple of minor falls over the years, but his low center of gravity really helped him, and he's always landed on his feet, yeah. up and he's ready to go again. It sounds a little bit crazy, but Chowder is very focused and a bit of a perfectionist. He gets very frustrated when he has a bad run and always wants to go back and try it again until he gets it right. He actually has the spirit of an athlete doing what he loves. We're asked this question a lot, and although yeah, Chowder has man. never been injured, not Chowder. all of on perfectly. You know, just like people, Chowder has to practice when he's learning something new, or even if he's trying a hill for the first few times. Oh, and he's had a couple of minor falls over the years, but his low center of gravity really helped him, and he's always landed. Look at that lean. Yeah. Look at that lean. 
There's also a dachshund. <laughs> I know of a dachshund who skateboards, and I think it's the same thing, like that low center of gravity. Oh, chowder, chowder, chowder. Well. Look at that one with his t-shirt on. Look at his t-shirt. Oh. Uh, he's just he's the cutest hell. AC, would you go skateboarding with a dog? Yeah. Do you Not think uh, dog, your dog, dog Phoenix? My dog would freak out. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty special well, little dog, huh? Bulldog, for sure, yeah. if I had yeah, one. You, That's amazing. You should teach Phoenix. I agree with Skramsky. The raw not, athleticism. Not gonna I happen. love that he gets pissed off and frustrated when he has a bad run. Yeah. Like, that's just wild to me. Dogs are special, man. Yeah. Yeah, There's. it's like those dogs that surf, too. That's, that's yeah, so that's crazy. crazy. Oh, amazing. So cool. That was so fun. So, you know, if you ever want to send in a video uh, in the new season of The Tomorrow Show, if any of you out in our community wants to send in a video yeah. uh, and wants to, like, have us highlight it, because um, if we got a video from you, it would really make our day. And uh, it would be worth highlighting what got us through uh, our summer. And so feel free to hit us up, the Hope For Us Network, on all the social platforms. Uh, and, you know, continue to tell people about Twitch. Uh, continue to tell them about our Twitch channel and how this network is trying to pr really push proactive prevention so we can all take better care of each other in the community, talk about the real shit and uh, not skirt it. So uh, that brings us to like the network's post during a very dark week of some, like I had some pretty big highs this week. My mom got to see local motive uh, for the first time since all the cancer shit she went through. And that was a big high having family there and stuff. And then to have the Roe v. Wade decision overturned uh, within a span of a couple of days, that was a devastating low, as I'm sure uh, I can even barely uh, imagine what uh, other people must feel like right now. Um, so I just want to highlight that uh, the Hope For Us Network puts up excellent resources whenever possible. That's like one of the biggest uh, things we can do is connect people to resources so they have them um, and and remind people that things like abortion access, abortion access is suicide prevention. Being proactive with suicide prevention means that you have to address it like every part of life. And if you make something super dangerous for a part of the community, that is not helping with suicide prevention. Yeah, forcing people to uh, yeah. to do something they don't want to do. Um, and there is just a really great, uh, thoughtful, compassionate post uh, over at the Hope For Us Network's Instagram. So take some time with it. Um, go check it out. Read the caption. Check out the sources. Giving people Share resources. The resources. Make, yeah, making them accessible and, and easy to find and as visible as we can uh, does more more good than people know i think if you have a table in your mind or in your community uh and it has all of the things somebody might need out on it and they make it visible raise the visibility like carl always says then it's there for them to grab it so drag it out of the shadows make it visible share these resources share this information because some people will just regurgitate whatever is told to them and that's not really helping things right now so uh, please another one of the biggest join. things we can do is that abortion funds um uh, yeah abortionfunds.org there's lots of different places that you can find um that kind of resource to donate to um that's going to be a big help in abortion hostile states and help people get to states that will allow it like illinois california nevada oregon washington please There's please do what few, you can well, a few other ones on the east coast so if you feel hopeless and you don't know what to do uh take some time to feel like you're okay first 
Yeah. And then uh, check out that post and uh, check out some of the suggestions uh, of what you can do. Because uh, let's not do nothing. Let's not do nothing. Because the stakes are too high. Yeah. And, uh, and I know it feels ridiculous, but vote in every election you can. Uh, those of you in Illinois, Tuesday is the primary. So you've got time still to uh, make a plan and go vote. And uh, I think you can do that before Tuesday also. Yeah, lots of early voting. Early voting sites. I know it feels super lame, but, you know. Ooh. Oh, she's Ooh, great. I love this lady. Yeah. Jane Elliott. Let's do it. And right now, white people are really frightened. If you don't understand the destruction of Planned Parenthood uh, offices, and you don't understand the wall that we're going to build on the southern border of the United States, you haven't read the book, The Birth Dearth by Ben Wattenberg. Ben Wattenberg was a brilliant Jewish man who was a member of the American Enterprise Institute. And he wrote a book, the first paragraph of which says, the main problem confronting the United States today is there aren't enough white babies being born in this country. He was an advisor to presidents of the United States. He wrote the book in 1987. He says, there are, if we don't change this and change it rapidly, white people will lose their numerical majority in this country and this will no longer be a white man's land. Now, I'm not misrepresenting, misrepresenting this. I'm telling you exactly, almost exactly what he says. He says, there are three things we can do to solve this. Number one, we could pay women to have babies as they have been doing in Western European nations for years. Then he says, and these are his words, not mine. Unfortunately, we would have to pay women of all colors to have babies, so we don't want to do that. He says, the second thing we could do is increase the number of legal immigrants that are allowed into this country every year. Then once again, he says, unfortunately, the vast majority of those wanting to come to this country today are people of color, so we don't want to do that. The third thing he says, and white men, women had better pay attention to this, 60% of the fetuses that are aborted every year are white. If we could keep that 60% alive, that would solve our birth dearth. Does that sound like racism to you? And if it doesn't, I want to know why it doesn't. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Jane Elliott. Fuck yeah, Jane Elliott. Yeah. Telling it like it is. Thanks, Carl, for finding that video and sharing it. Really uh, drives it home. So moving on with the show. We, uh, we are so lucky to uh, be able to do this show and have some fun with y'all be able to connect with y'all uh and especially get to do it with our friend ac um this this next little bit um is a nature is amazing and so are you that um we had some other friends tag along uh you won't see them but you will hear hear little voices in the background and stuff <laughs> like that but uh if you didn't see the new jurassic park movie uh, i just want to say that it's stupid and awesome like if it's like it's like if a bunch of like kids were like i want to i want this in that and, and i want to see this in the movie and this in the movie and they're all like all right yeah give them what they want you know so um we had a really good time seeing that new dominion it was great to see the old jurassic park cast meet the new and uh there the were hijinks. also there were also a lot of like message a lot of like actually uh, feathered, uh, accurate dinosaurs. So I feel like I felt like they were trying to make up for the inaccuracies <laughs> of the first couple films. Yes, sir. Um, Did you see it? Nope. Do you like Jurassic Park? It's all right. You're gonna get mad Jurassic Park vibes. I don't. I don't think so. Next segment. Oh, you probably, are probably not. I want I want you to check this out. It's so cool. All right. It is so and cool. So, All right. And here's this the is, thing, just, just to be clear to the Jurassic Park fans out there and whatnot, perfect. I'm not hating on Jurassic Park. I just I never got into it. It's like yeah. um here's another one. Uh like Harry Potter. It's dope. I just didn't get into it. Yeah. That, you know, like it's like I and I've seen like a couple Jurassic Parks. I played the the music to the score actually one year for uh, like concert band or marching band once. Hell yeah! So and the score is amazing. Um, I don't What'd know. What you play in the marching band? It's just not your cup of tea. 
Yeah. It's still good. I just, you know, yeah. I will see it eventually and sometime. You playing Snare in Marching Band? I've played Snare. I've played Quince. And I did, uh, I did cymbals and like drum and bugle core. That's awesome. Such so crispy fun. sounds, crispy snare. It's fun. Hell yeah. I bet. That's like a little foreshadowing almost. It is. All right. But not of this segment. The next later segment. Right now we're going to show you the nature is amazing and so are you. Go on a little adventure with us. Hello. Oh, what are you doing? We were in Evanston. Are we going to Masterpiece Framing? No, no. Where are we going? We're going to Dave's Down to Earth Rock Shop across the street there. What? And there it is with a little Triceratops skull and, and a medal. What? Mm -hmm. That's cool. 7-Eleven Main Street. Let's go see what's inside. Nature is amazing and so are you. Oh my gosh. Look at these stained glasses. This is across the street, but boy, we had to take a look. What's this place called? Cultivate? Cultivate. Peek in there. Yeah. Too bad they're closed. Oh, yeah. It goes all the way back. Look at that. Cool. Oh, yeah. So much cool shit here. Copper. Mm -hmm. Dinosaur bone, holy shit. Boy mammoth tooth. I love that shit. My dinosaur bone. Oh, 
Wow, this petrified would have flowed good. Ammonite slices. That's what they looked like back in the day. Ooh, boy. Stuff of nightmares. The golden spiral at work. The Nautilus. Holy moly. Oh, giant, giant tooth. Boy. This guy's kind of a cutie. Look at him, babe. Jurassic Park. Get the DNA from a fly. Oh. Mosquito. From it's the mosquito wings. We'll just grab them. They're in the wasp. Yeah. Pretty cool. Nature's amazing. Searching for goodness. Fossilized crabs. Oh my goodness. Jeez. Oh. Amazing. Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. Boy. Well, a gentleman. There you go. Was he upstairs? I don't think so. I don't think I've ever seen him here. I think I've seen his wife. Holy moly. Sir, you have dinosaur eggs? What if I'm a right now? Holy shit. <laughs> Oh, there's one. It's hatching. <laughs> oh, silly. Please do not touch that. Not the mama. That was called dinosaurs. Yeah, it was just like. It was ridiculous. Hi, buddy. Raptors. It's probably Dave. He probably made it. <laughs>
didn't know that uh, that, that was in Evanston. Yeah. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. So this guy, um, this guy who opened this place, I think with the help of his parents, he's been like personally collecting stuff since he was a kid. And he would be like, hey, hey, mom and dad. And he was like eight. He was like, there is a landslide. Let's go. Let's go to this landslide in Ohio and find rocks. And they'd be like, OK, Dave. So <laughs> they like he just has like all these crazy things in his collection. And then, you know, also all the other stuff in the shop that you can buy. Yeah, that downstairs stuff you can't buy. None of that's for sale. And for some sale. of the stuff upstairs, too, isn't for sale. Oh, yeah, that's true. But some of those big-ass fossils that had, like, really fine details, those uh, those were not for sale. Um, and, man, those big-ass plates where it was just, like, the most perfect fossil was almost like, uh, like probably the most perfect conditions or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, really cool. And then mm -hmm. I always go crazy and buy a bunch of rocks. <laughs> yeah, we definitely came home with some rocks, some new rocks. Yeah. You got that ammonite right there. Yeah, um, ammonite. But yeah, those ammonites are wild too. The spiral, like in nature, is in, in nature, is always so fascinating to me. Like the golden spiral, that golden ratio where like the nautilus shell or the ammonite or however you want to like kind of refer to that shape uh the chambered nautilus or the ammonite it's just fucking it's crazy cool. yeah it's like it's like this whole like collision of science and math uh and nature and magic i i just think it's special what is this guy babe uh that guy is is that a trilobite yeah it's a, a really old trilobite can't see it yeah you can't Man, really you guys them. know your rocks but so, yeah that was a little creature that was in yeah, the sea. they, they were, look like kind of roach like they're they're back it up a little bit now that you're big yeah that's crazy like that. it's yeah. pretty and it, they mounted it probably on some type of no i think it was found on that oh, okay yeah they just cut it away yeah anyway they look like really gnarly like shit you'd see in nightmares uh but like prehistoric like so before people were walking around there was these like really gnarly massive bugs like almost massive cockroaches or something like that they remind me of uh like the art direction for the alien films with sigourney totally. weaver where like the alien has just got like all this fucking <laughs> bah, that, uh, yeah it's definitely based on that guy. oh boy oh boy um but yeah so I think the other thing that is just remarkable remarkable about a place like that is people think of Chicago and they think of Evanston and they think of those two things in very different lights. Chicago happens to be a lot of cities like all mashed together pretty much. It's so big and there's so much different stuff happening. So much beautiful, awesome shit. And then in Evanston, it's up by like Northwestern University, which is a big 10 university, a lot of money, affluent um you know one of the, of the one city. of the most diverse places in the country yeah it's fantastic school uh known for their their educational prowess as well as their athleticism and just this beautiful lakefront uh campus and uh basically people think of evanston as like this whole different kind of thing but it's very much just the, the top neighborhood of the city and there's lots of cool shit there including this free uh, museum in the basement of Dave's down to earth rock shop. So if you're looking for, uh, something to do, I think little kids would get a kick out of that stuff too. And for adults too, to sit in a room and look at something that says, Oh, this is from 300 million years ago or 20 million years ago, any large chunk of, of time like that, like the petrified wood and stuff, or like the dinosaur teeth, or whatever it happens to be, it's awe inspiring. Um, yeah, it's like the it's a good centering for me when I go into a rock shop or to a record store and I'm able to just kind of like look at stuff. I don't have to buy something, um, just by being there, it makes me feel good. What's you also like, I got this Matt Geo the other day. And it's all about all the like 
new science around paleontology. Like they can they can like figure out what color the eggs were now. Um, what? Yeah, they Those can are like Easter eggs. They can figure out like they can see the uh, like this imprints. is a really cool fossil because these these right here are wing patterns from feathers, but yeah. they used to not be able to like excavate these things in a way that was that that protected their fragility and so they you know now they can like do all these things virtually and they can see things in so much more detail than they used to and apparently right now um it's like they're finding more fossils per year it's a fossil boom and newer species new more more fossils and more species than they've ever found before because they can get those minute details thanks to like ct scans and virtual scanning and and then t you know other tools so like this is really crazy and it really yeah it really like puts things in perspective it's really wild they're figuring out what their brains did figuring out like that they have like cool all sorts of wild 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 stuff natio so, rules um dinomania yeah so anyway uh it's just it's just wild that like you can see all of those things in this little place in evanston illinois mm -hmm. and that's just like the tiniest fraction of everything you know they have a really cool corner in the back too that's uh by the a bunch of fossils uh like for making your own jewelry and there's also like cracked pieces of uh, different minerals, like little like shards kind of like that you can get a deal on, like in these little bins back there. If you're like a maker and you wanted to like make a mosaic or um, something. Yeah. Make a pendant, any of that stuff. Really cool. Yeah. Love that spot. You should check it out. Yeah. Very cool. Next we time. Could, we could talk about it ad nauseum. Yeah. Next time. Uh, you're coming with us, buddy. You, you. Do you get that kind of feeling when you're in a record shop, AC? Like where it's just like a calming feeling, even if you're not going to like buy anything? Like just thumbing through vinyl? Does, does that make you feel? Yes and no. Yeah. It's like I'm happy to be there and like I'll lose myself. But at the same time, like uh, I have to tell myself. <laughs> You know, yeah, it's it's the the devil and the the angel AC on each shoulder. When I go, well, around. I was supposed to only bring in a certain amount of money, and I didn't do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I I try not to go to to record stores too much because I I know it's bad. I can't just go into a record store and go browsing. Yeah, like, I, like I'll walk out with at least one. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard, like, when you find so much cool shit, not to buy something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, man, antique stores. Yeah. Uh, it's it's also frustrating not to be able to buy all the cool shit you find. Uh, but, yeah, man, I thought it was cool to see dinosaur bones. Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Mine's, mine's definitely a triceratops. I think they're pretty badass. Me, too. I, I think pterodactyls are kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, super, super tight. I, I will say this though, like Jurassic Park, like from what I've seen, it's dope. Music score is dope. The, the only thing that freaks me out is that somebody could seriously try and like make a dinosaur or something come back to life. Yeah. It's a cautionary tale. <laughs> it definitely like, is. <laughs> and I'm all about science and cool stuff and things, but please don't bring. Dinosaurs are they're they're awesome, but they 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 will kill you. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. There's a reason why. Uh, yeah, we weren't we weren't meant to be around at the same time as that. I think <laughs> I think Jurassic World uh, hits on some like pretty beautiful like balance in between a ridiculous action film and having some things throughout it where you're like, oh man, it's like. That's a beautiful like comment on our society and like yeah. that we should not be messing around like this. Yeah. And uh, you know, that 
ultimately humans are um, really, really bad at making <laughs> making good decisions, uh, like <laughs> for our for our Earth, like yeah. collectively, unfortunately. And uh, don't give don't give in to despair. You know, <clears throat> we need you. We need you to fight. Um, and it's cool to have a little break from that shit being a, a place that gives you kind of a zen feeling like if it's a rock shop or a museum um or you know a record shop just to take those small moments be present nourish yourself uh take care of your soul just as much as your body um that's proactive prevention realizing those things aren't just uh minutiae of your life realizing that those things are important that uh, hanging out with your buddy, making a beat is very important and uh, reflecting and, and, and adding uh, to that value in your presence. If that makes sense. So, um, oh, yeah. Searching for goodness time. Yeah. So we can get Scott out here. Yeah. Do you want to like say anything first or no? Sure. Um, can you maybe tell people why this was something you wanted to go to? Yeah, so our segment, um, Searching for Goodness, this week is about how um, Mike and I went to the Scottish uh, Highland Games and, well, yeah, Highland Games and Scottish Heritage Festival. That's the proper. In, uh, yeah, Number out two. in Itasca, Illinois. It's put on by... Um, Chicago Scots. Yeah, which is part of, like, the Caledonia... Um, Senior Living Center. Senior Living Center, yeah. which, yeah, so they, that's why it's like out in Itasca, because that's where the Senior Center is, um, but. They haven't had it for the last couple of years, because COVID. Haven't, yeah, they haven't had it for three years. Uh, Mike and I really wanted to see some of the weird Highland games, which ironically we kind of ended up missing. It was just Friday and Saturday. Game they did tough. a lot of them on Friday. So a lot of the Scottish Highland games are um, ancient Celtic things that they would do. So like they're, they're old ancient hay. games. So like, yeah, throwing hay. Like big ass things of hay. Trying um, to throw that as high as you could over a fucking. Throwing tree trunks, like giant tree trunks. Caber uh, toss. And that it has to land at 12 noon. You like, they like lift it up and, and throw it. And. Uh, all of that stuff comes from like the Vikings and like the old ancient Celts and stuff. So we were interested in going to see that. And then, um, yeah, I digress. I'm Scottish. My my father uh, is Dunbar. Uh, from a Scottish clan that we can trace back to the 10 hundreds, which is pretty wild. Um, it's like an ancient clan. We kind of learned about that. It's a really ancient clan, but like, uh, one that was kind of like, I don't want to say like killed out, but it was smaller. It got kind of swallowed up. Yeah. Because they were, um, they were a threat to the, the Scottish King basically is why. So anyway, um, yeah, always knew that. Um, and my dad was always really proud of it. And, I just got, I just got interested in it. So yeah. So that's why I wanted to go. Um, it's one of the biggest ones in the United States. Uh, otherwise they have, it's basically like a gathering of clans, Scottish clans all together because the English tried to kill off the Scots. They're really, you um, believe them shits. They're really, uh, proud and, uh, protective of all those, all of their culture. So that's why they have these gathering of the clans around the world. So I always wanted to go to one. So I wanted I wanted to look for the Dunbar clan, but they were not there. Um, but you learn more about your family. Yeah, like, I learned there's more. There's so much and, interesting stuff you can learn looking into your roots. Yeah. So it was the biggest um, gathering of pipe bands in, the, in North America, too. So yeah, dude. AC, that was really cool. Did you get the video I sent you when we were there? Yeah, I checked it out. It was cool. Yeah, yeah, so we'll have some of, of that in there too. The crispy snare drum, the drum and bugle core. Only this was pipe bands with bagpipers and and drums. And you know, I think uh, 
I think that me and you would probably really look good in some kilts, AC. Me and you. What do you say? You want to get a kilt? No, I'm not going to do the kilt. I'm sorry. I don't, not, I don't think I can so, pull it off. I don't even look good in, like, normal shorts. They they have black kilts, like black and gray. Like, there were some you know kids Mike was going to sell me? There like, were some, know? like, teen kids who were uh, kind of, like, punk punk in their kilts. It there was, was some, cool. Yeah, there was some punky kilt wear. So, yeah, let's roll it. Let, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's see what, what it was all about. Scott, I can't hear this. For this car show. Pipes just keep growing in volume, dude. Oh my god, look at that. Look at that, we're in. We are in. That's how you can tell. Oh man, we need some piping on. Some sports. Dags. Hi guys. <laughs> Amazing. Can you hear the pipers piping, babe? The pipe band's warming up on Hamilton Lakes. Dunbar. Let's see what we find out. Okay. So, this is So, you have to find out where the. You're looking at. To know which of these fits. Okay. What did you find? Your dad's name? These are some of my. Some of your ancestors, huh? Um, <laughs> that's cool. And then there's also an English family that came out of Cornwall. And even if you say these are districts, so these are places. Yeah. Ohio. Ottawa. Well, this is like for a summer setting. So it's muted colors. And there would have been hunting version and a more dressy version. And then you have. Um, the it's going to be your set. names, I think. Yeah. Clan names. Yes. Got a bar in there. Let's see. D. Duncan. Nope. Oh. Uh, that's um, crap. Well, it's not a... <laughs> This is like a big one. Yeah. There's the two stewards. Stewart. Love it. 
Three stewards. Found it. Exactly the same no. Exactly. Forty-two. Each person came with different percentages. That's right. When they were starting to do a lot of very specific That's right. Official signia of the chiefs may only be used by them when they're present. Look at your shield, girl. That's amazing. Girl. And then you got territories. Yeah, you got territories. Right here. And then all the way down. Here. What? Right. Oh, there. And then there. There it is. Oh, boy. That's an even better Dunbar card right there. What's it say? says the, the family claims to trace its line to crying in the same. The same. <laughs> Sounds intense. The father of Duncan in 1034. Royalty. Malcolm the Third. The the lands were given to Dun the Gospatrick, the Earl of Northumberland, because of its strategic posi position, Dunbar Castle, north of Edinburgh, right. was besieged on many occasions, most notably in 1337, when Black Agnes, the wife of the ninth Earl, defended it successfully. Later family worthies include the Lord Chancellor Gavin Dunbar and the poet William Dunbar, who is sometimes hailed as the Scottish Chaucer. That's a and it said that read he, a poem by him. Yeah, and it says that it said that he died alongside his king because he was like the, at at Culloden because he was like the poet of the king or something. Wow. <laughs> Look at him! There was so much blood. <laughs> oh, that's so silly. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Wait a minute. It's coming. Don't move yet. Don't move. Don't yet. move. Exactly. 
And then when that didn't work, you would turn it around and grab it like bop them. Bop them. That will do it. Yes, you can come play. This is what my dad's What did you keep saying? I kept saying the spinnies. Yeah. The spinnies, right? You're getting the spinnies. No, no, the, the people that were like spinning the fucking mallets. Oh. They were like whipping them around like little like balls of mallet. And they're like, <laughs> they're like nunchucking, but like also doing the, doing the Tom hits. Yeah. Oh, man, it's cool. And the crispy, crispy, crispy snare. So crispy. So the way the, the those guys playing snares, they're playing traditional grit. Okay. And that's where you like hold it. holding yeah. this. Like sideways with their left oh. hand instead of straight. Right. <laughs> Sticks everywhere. And uh, mostly you'll see more people doing that and that style of drumming that was on traditional, definitely like drum and bugle core, lots of marching band and uh, jazz band a lot um, or orchestra. You don't really see a whole lot of rock drummers that play traditional. I think, what's his name? Um, Help me out, Mike V. Rolling Stones. Char Charlie? Charlie Watts. Charlie Watts. He was like one of the last like drummers, like 
rock drummers that I knew of that played traditional. And it's a whole technique. Like, if you can play traditional, like, your technique is amazing. Like, you're a good drummer. And I actually had to play traditional a couple weeks ago because my finger still hadn't healed from my dog bite. Yeah. And every time I played regular, it would just kill, just hitting. So I was like, I wonder. And I switched to trad, to traditional, and I didn't have that banging on the finger because it's loose the way you hold it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I finished out all my rehearsals for two weeks playing traditional. Wow. <laughs> Nobody knew. Sounded the same. And I was like, I still have my technique over all these years. Nice. Yeah, it was really it was really cool to see when all the pipe bands were like lined up. You could see them all spinning at the same time, you know, like yeah, that, was, that was that was awesome. That was, and then what's the big drum called? The, the bass drum? drum? The big bass. There was this yeah. one woman, uh oh, yeah. female presenting person who was like she was like so into it. She was like grooving, you could just see her whole body just like we were, boom, 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 <laughs> it was really boom, fun to watch boom. her. It was great. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Yeah, since we didn't get to see the caber toss, which is where they like do the the giant like trunk of a tree, basically flip that over. Um, the mass bands at the end was definitely like the highlight. Yeah. for us, I think we did see some. Uh, they take a 56, 56 pound weight, I believe, and they like hold it under their legs and they flip it over their head and they're supposed to go yeah it's like over high, a high jump for yeah. a for a weight and it's That's that crazy. was wild yeah and so we did see that um we also saw the the hurling of the haggis the hurling of the haggis where lassies had to stand on a half barrel of whiskey and hurl a haggis as far as they could Throw a frozen piece of haggis as far as they could and then there was a, eat a haggis eating contest too that Mike almost did. I almost did it. I, almost, I was thinking about it. He didn't he do still, it. He still has to. Taste I've never haggis. had haggis, so it'd be a really weird way to try a, a food you've never had before. Is it me? Know, like a, an eating contest. Haggis is haggis is like you're not gonna like it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> and and oat. It's like oats and spices and organs cooked in a sheep stomach. Like, how do they serve it to you? Uh, kind of in like a, kind of like a loaf. It's like a, I guess, yeah, they cut <laughs> like slices of it almost. Yeah, it's like probably like this big. Um, I don't. My dad was saying that I've he never had it, so I can't. I can't. Yeah, really my speak dad. To it. I have before I was vegetarian. Um, he says that he doesn't think they do it in a sheep stomach that often anymore. Um, yeah. But so, like, yeah, you, they would like they like slice it up. It, what, what it's, was, I'm sorry, go ahead. They like slice it up. It's kind of like it's almost like a bologna sandwich, probably. Yeah. When, when they hand it to you, I don't know. Yeah, you get like big slices of it. Hard pass. What's the prize? I don't know what the prize I, was. I don't really know what the prize was either. But I we uh, we chickened out. I wanted her to th I wanted her to throw the haggis. I yeah. Mean. Uh, I said she wanted to I, have an outfit. If I get a kilt in my clan's tartan, then I will um I will throw haggis next time. So yeah. So we're gonna work on that for next year. <laughs> ne uh Aaron, next year, next time, make Mike do the the, the eating competition or whatever. Yeah. Okay, I will. I'm a little disappointed. And this is why. <laughs> for those of you out there that don't know, Mike V is a lover of food. I love food. Mike V loves food. Loves food. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to hear that you did not compete in a competition involving food, especially a food you've never had, that's yeah. not something that would be like almost right up your alley. Like Mike V's like, yes, dude. Like, eh, yeah, why not? I'll try it out. Like, I'll try that. <laughs> I'll try it out and eat a pound of it. He might you know? not. <laughs> What's he hey? What's this bell? Let me ring the bell. Find out what's going on. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm adventurous. I ring bells. Mike V, you, you gotta play to win, baby. Baby. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I'm so I'm so glad though that uh, you guys got to be a part of our shenanigans a little bit. Yeah. Was so it, a little, it was just cool. like one more special. thing. So tartans are a universal thing. They have like tartans that that's what the plaids are called. 
Mm -hmm. They have tartans that are specifically for families. And then they have ones that like anybody can wear that are kind of universal. So we were looking up a lot of those. So there's one that's like Isle of Sky, um, or there's even ones for different cities like you saw in the book. Um, but there's, yeah, there's certain ones that like everybody can wear. So like Black Watch or Gray Watch, those are on tons of plaid shirts that you buy. Like, yeah, um, it's crazy when you start to think about the, the fashion element of it where like people sometimes are going around wearing like a pattern that's like culturally significant to their family or their lineage and that's that's cool yeah it's kind of cool it's like it's sneaky like that yeah well it was a good way to be and then well so the the reason that it's special is that at a point in time they were the english made it illegal to wear your kilt or your tartan so you couldn't you were not allowed to wear them um so yeah, so like they were hidden away. People would like hide them away for centuries. And then in the 18 mid 1800s, they started making them again. They started being allowed to do that again. So, um that's when they kind of started weaving a lot of a lot of them. Uh Yeah. So, look up an inter internet video of weaving a tartan. It's pretty neat. Yeah, all the These different crazy colors. machines. But yeah, like at Christmas longer. time, like all the all the like plaids that people have on stuff, like those are usually like Stuart. real ones. Yeah, the Stuart one is really popular. The Stuart. Uh, who I like people Stuart that way. People still believe is the rightful king of England. So. True, 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 true. So yeah, uh, it was really cool. It was fun. Um, we got beers. They had they had scotch tastings, which we should have done next time. We will next time we'll scotch have a better tasting. plan. Yeah, yeah. You the in? scotch tasting didn't happen either. We just didn't do it because it was a lot. It was. It was. I know oh, you're sunny. disappointed. It was very sunny out, AC, and we had scotch ales instead of scotch whiskeys because yeah. it was very warm and we we're on a, and we're on a budge. We couldn't do both. I guess. I get it. I get it. We're on a budge, you I know? Get it. Now we know what it's like and we'll be prepared. Yeah. We'll know for next time. Yeah. You guys uh you guys ready to get get Scott out here? Yeah, let's bring Scott. Let's out. get Scott out here. I want to I want to hear what he thinks of that Scottish heritage festival. Hey buddy. Hello. Hi, Scott. Scott, how are you? <laughs> oh, I'm good. I'm good. Happy are you are you in air conditioning cuz you're in you're in you're in the Texas heat? Yeah, yeah, I'm in air conditioning. It's still a little warm because if we uh, try and cool the house down past like 78, it's just a waste of energy because it's just so hot here. Yeah. Scott, how how hot is it right now? There. Uh, let's see. It is. Oh, right yeah. now we're at a cool 100. Oh, that ain't that bad, you know. Black. Nice. The century mark. <laughs> That's so, crazy, though. We're actually going to be cooler this this coming week. We have a uh, the highest, the lowest high is ninety two, which oh. is surprising nice. going into you know July here soon. It's a but big August difference. is really the worst. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Scott, with with it always being that hot out in Texas, do they do they have cooling centers out there like they do here in Chicago? Yeah, they have uh, some cooling centers, not as many. As there should be, not as many like accessible to the people that you know really need it. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I know for a fact we have a few cooling centers here in San Antonio. So right on. People out there, if you're feeling feeling the heat, look up cooling centers in your community or go to your public library. One of the few uh, places we can still go without the expectation of consumerism. Yeah. Um yeah, and if you know somebody and you can share those resources, all the better. That's what the network's all about. Uh, what did you think of that uh, Scottish Heritage Festival experience? It was cool. Uh, I, I really liked the, uh, listening to the music because, like, I said the comment, I was like, you can probably hear that for miles. Like, all those bagpipes going, like, that's setting off every dog in, like, a 20-mile radius or something. <laughs> You're hearing those. But, uh, it was like a constant thing. It was like... Yeah. In the background the whole the whole day. I, yeah, it was definitely powerful. Pretty cool to hear all those people playing 
a song together. Yeah, they played Scotland the Brave and they played um, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace all together, which was really nice. Wow. Yeah. You get pretty like choked up. There's something about that sound. But yeah, it's very moving. You ever like uh, just been at a show, whether it's like a bagpipe show or not, uh, the music just sweeps you away to this place where you're about to just like cry all over yourself <laughs> it's it's a good feeling it's like a very vulnerable like oddly safe feeling when you're like consumed by the the music and it like pushes those tears over the edge yeah. uh, i definitely was crying my face off while i was filming some of that stuff <laughs> it was just like well, Amazing Grace, in its own way, is just a very uh, um, grief-laden song for a lot of people. It's like played at a lot of funerals and memorials, and it's played to honor like warriors from Scottish Rebellion. It's played, it's played in so many different ways. And uh, my grandma's name was Grace, so like. During that moment, I was thinking of her. I was thinking of my grandpa who passed in November. And, you know, the music just kind of did its thing. It started started to kind of like, you know, smooth out some of that hurting, uh, like in the process of those tears flowing, you know? Yeah. So. Have you ever had haggis? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> sounds, sounds nasty as hell, right? It just, I don't know. I just... I'm not a huge fan of like organ meat. Yeah, 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 yeah. it definitely it just, tastes like that. Like that, <laughs> I do remember. Like it definitely Yucky. has an organ flavor. <laughs> I had I had something similar to it one time when I was in Belgium in Ghent. Oh, like ten years ago, I had uh, they called it head cheese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't it wasn't haggis, but definitely uh, the only time <laughs> I've been like well, this. I'm 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 a little worried. I don't know if I really want to eat this. But you know, it's good to push yourself out of your comfort zone, even if it's just going to a festival, not necessarily eating. Oregon. What did you what did you think of the dinosaur and rock shop stuff, Scott? That was so cool. I love like my, my partner especially loves like like crystals and like finding fossils and stuff like that when we go like out hiking or just around and like but it's just crazy that you can just walk around, obviously not everywhere, but kind of everywhere, and just like yeah. find these things that are just millions and millions of years old and have like been through so much. And, you know, you don't know if other people have seen it before. Probably not. If you dug it yeah. up, I don't think anyone's seen it before. So you're like the first person to look at this thing if you found it. But it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Thought Remember, actually, we, we went on a hike with his cousin in Austin. Oh, yeah. And there were all these, like, fossil fossils in the rocks that she pointed out. That Definitely. was really cool. That was, uh, I don't remember the name of that place that we were hiking at, but yeah. Austin has great many hikes. I mean, there's probably a lot of good wilderness all over Texas, actually. Um, we definitely are going to get some hiking in when we're out, out uh, West Coast way. Um, but, man, like... What's it been like uh, the last, well, the last year and some change for you, um, like kind of being behind the scenes and being able to, uh, I don't know, like support a lot of different people and sharing their stories and uh, sharing their perspectives. What's that been like for you? It's been awesome. Uh, I really like, you know, when everyone's kind of coming together, you know, Christina, Ben, Carl, me, y'all, like we were coming together, like back, actually it'll be, I think a year, I think the year anniversary of when we like publicly announced was like July 11th. Yeah. So we come up on a year. I mean, we were talking prior, like right now, a year ago, and it was just like the opportunity to bring all these awesome folks together and, um, you know, have a say in how to like uplift and like create spaces for people to come share, you know, what gives them hope, um, the ways that they get through the day and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's been really cool. It's been a very uh, like eye-opening. I'm usually, well, obviously I haven't been on camera 
for pretty much anything that we've done in the year. Um, but it's kind of like I've been working my, myself up to do it. Um, it's it's been exciting. I, I, I've been learning a lot about like the production side of things and, and stuff like that and hoping to do even fancier stuff uh, when we come back uh, later. Yeah, later. dude. You, you've done such a good job. Like I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> as, as someone who, um, like for myself personally, I didn't have any experience producing a digital show like this um, when the pandemic first hit. And uh, back at the old country, I, I had to figure out how to do that on the fly. And I started to really enjoy it and love it when we were doing Conversations Cafe. But, um, you know, to watch you kind of take it to this like extra polished place um, and really own it and do some really cool stuff. When we announced the hope for us network last year, seven uh, 11 slurpy day, by the <laughs> way, get yourself a free slurpy rent. But uh, yeah, it's just been really cool. Uh, watch you work with Christina, make these cool overlays, like the cloud stuff, the tomorrow show logo and all that right there. Um, how do you, how do you make this happen? What, like what, what magical stuff is happening here? How'd you get, how'd you do this? Yeah. I mean like the, the logos and stuff, like yeah. that's Christina. It's all Christina. She's really great at this sort of stuff. I, I'm pretty sure she like talked to y'all about like, what were you like looking for? Uh, like what's the vibe of the tomorrow show? Like, what do you, what represents it? And I think like the rising sunflower is like really cool. Um, or it could be a setting sun. I think it's rising. Um, I, I think of it as rising yeah. as well. Yeah, we just try and think about, you know, what what is our fill in the blank, you know? And it's like blank gets me to tomorrow. Like my mm -hmm. dog, my this little treat that I'm going to cook for myself or, you know, this game I'm going to play. And that's the point of us talking about this stuff on, on the show. Um, but, yeah, rising, rising, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I mean... You guys, you guys came together uh, and figured out this this platform and like how to make uh, these different shows um, like have their own personality and stuff too. Um, do you feel like that was like a very organic process for you, um, or did you really? Um, I don't know. Like, were you trying to like kind of drive that with your own kind of eye for detail and like own visions interpreting? like what you wanted yeah i think at first i was like really anxious about wanting to make everything like extremely polished have think everything like this is how we're gonna do it xyz follow this uh and like the more i went along it's like that's just not how it's gonna happen it's gotta be a lot more free-flowing obviously you want to set some structures uh in place like scheduling and like just so there's time to like plan things properly but like also just like letting it be like you know, the, the beauty of like live streaming content is that it's supposed to just be like kind of off the cuff a lot of the time. Right. Uh, so like embracing that and letting it be a little bit more free form is, is nice. Um, like I know that like, for instance, like for the tomorrow show, we, you guys have like an itinerary, but it's just kind of like a rough guide. Like we're going to talk about these things in this order, maybe not like for this long or this short, or maybe we'll throw some other stuff in there or here or there. Like that's just like the name of the game. And, um, I really like it. Like it can be a little stressful because I get a little like not like stressed out or freaked out, but like I kind of have an anxious personality sometimes. Yeah. Um, so it's like I'm learning to like like well chill out, just go with the flow, and as long you know everyone's having a good time, and we're putting out good stuff. Like it's it's awesome. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I. I have some like really fond memories of like each of the shows we've done. We've done 19 shows. This is our 19th show in this season. And, uh, you know, we were uh, just lucky to have y'all su support. Do you have any like uh, favorite things, favorite memories from the Tomorrow Show this season? I really, I'm, I have a bad like recall memory, I feel like. So I'm not able to remember things like, unless I have to think, but like, I know like the first few episodes were just like fun, right? Cause it was just like, you know, I love working, you know, with you, Mike at 
you know, hope for the day and all that stuff. And so I was getting this opportunity to like work with you and Aaron and AC. Um, I know I've only, you know, really been around you guys for not that long, like in person, but um, it was just really cool to like, to be able to work with, with y'all and like make something whenever there was a lot of like uh, despair kind of going on <laughs> around yeah. the world and the country and all this stuff. And yeah, I'm, I mean, I think like it wasn't necessarily tomorrow's show, but like the housewarming party. Yeah. Yeah. It was at y'all's house. And so like, you know, that, I consider that kind of like the star of the tomorrow show a little bit. And like that, it looks so fun. I wish I could have been there, but um, it was still <laughs> cool to be there on the back end and see like that was the start of, of all this, you know, live stream. Yeah. It, was, it was really cool. Ben did that amazing interview with Marlo. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all were really like jamming out with uh, the ukulele and the, the beatbox or whatever. Was... Yeah. Yes, indeed. Hey, AC, do you remember when Scott made those uh, al album covers for the <laughs> songs? I when we, so. uh, the harmonica one and then the kalimba one, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was cool. So, so Christina didn't make everything. You, you made those <laughs> things. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Um, did you just, like, hear a song and, like, kind of get inspired and just, like, whip something up real quick? Yeah, I think that was, I had like 10 minutes before we were going to go live. And I was like, oh, my God, it would be so fun if like I just made like a little album cover really quick. And I was like frantically on Canva, as I usually am before these shows. Like I'm like, oh, my God, the overlay's wrong. Oh, my God, I need to fix the background. I'm like, <laughs> there's like so many things that like happen like right before we turn on the camera. That's like I got to get socials ready to go. I got to get all the videos ready to go. I got to make sure that everything's downloaded and that. Oh my God, this overlay has this person's name spelled wrong or it's covering the camera or, or whatever. Yeah, you're so uh, good at it though. You're so good <laughs> at, at like that off the cuff. Kinda. Yeah. I know that we appreciate really you a lot, man. Uh, how you like, you'll bring, you'll pull stuff up on the screen when we're talking about stuff and uh, really enhance the program. And I'm excited to see uh, what we do in the next season. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, can, uh, what, um, brought you what brought you into the mental health space do you want to talk a little bit about that i mean like i i've always like you know struggled with like my mental health and stuff even when i was like young young um i remember my grandma would be like all the time like i think you need to go to therapy and obviously you know like growing up in like a culture of like where mental health and getting help is like stigmatized i was like no i don't need that i don't need that and, not wanting to do that um and so like kind of growing up and being exposed to more is like this is really important i mean everybody struggles with their mental health at some point or another or regularly it's just how life is as a human being um you're gonna have good days you're gonna have bad days you're gonna have even worse days um and just like you know making sure that people have like access or at least information about like how to you know handle their mental health or talk about it is like extremely important and you know the reason that i went to college to study communication was i really wanted to uplift information and connect people with information about things that can help them and then i mean that's exactly what we're doing here at the network it's about sharing this building this network of information and people to help others and that's just it's like you know, made a lot of sense to me. Hell yeah. Well put. You should tell us about your car camping setup. Yeah. You said you, when you were going through chemo, you had like a pretty sick setup in your car for getting out there. Yeah, I um, like I kind of mentioned earlier, I kind of have this tendency to like want to over plan things and like be like, you know, it ends up a lot of times looking like over engineering things. And so I'd seen all these like overlanding setups where these people build like these crazy boxes for the back of their, you know, trucks or their SUVs. And um, it has like all these storage containers and like special little cutouts for all these different things. And I was like, this is right when I was like going through chemo and um, 
I didn't have anything better to do than just lay in my bed and feel like shit all day. And so like, sometimes I was like, I just want to want like, I would fall down these holes, these YouTube holes of just watching like all these videos. And um, I just wanted to, you know, find a way that I could start getting camping when I started feeling a little better when, you know, the chemo wasn't so bad. And um, I just wanted to fill this box. And so I like visited my dad. I'm trying to find pictures of it right now. I don't know if I have any. I'd probably do some of it. Um, I like visited my dad for the weekend and he's like, we're going to build this. And it was like, I, I made this like mo the most over-engineered, complicated, crazy setup you could ever think. And then my dad like looked at, he's like, we're not going to do this. <laughs> so it was like real simple, you know, like a couple like two, like one by sixes, sheet of plywood and like this hinged system so that um, my, I, I drive a forerunner and so it has like fold down seats. And so you could like fold the thing up whenever you just needed to have all the seats in the car. And then when you were camping, fold down the seats and then fold it out with a little box underneath it. And they had like a straight flat platform that you could put a sleeping bag on. Uh, for camping and I like built this like really again overly engineered complicated PVC like tarp system for like so I could open the door and like put up like a little room outside of my uh, car so like if I needed a change or if I just wanted to like sit outside cool. yeah again extremely over <laughs> <laughs> I probably spent way more money and time than I, I should have on it, but it gave me something to do. Um, and it let me, you know, go camping a couple times with it. And, you know, I, I really enjoyed that. So. Cool. Yeah, man. That, just like having those distractions, sometimes like having things to do when your mind is running like a million miles a minute when you're dealing with something stressful, whether it's a journey like yours, um, battling cancer and having to do chemo or you know if like you're you're spiraling because of the news and uh you know sometimes like getting up and going to work for me can suck but it can also be like a really good distraction sometimes yeah. like if i i just need to be thinking about like just these you know product upcs and stuff in the warehouse and like very simple things that are like, there's not uh, a bunch of different answers, you know, or there's not like these complex problems to solve. They're just like, do this, do this, do this. Sometimes that's really helpful for me. And uh, like, were you going out camping on your own? Yeah, yeah, it was solo uh, whenever I went this time. You just wanted to like kind of treat yourself, get out there and like, just not be cooped up probably because like the whole time you're going through treatment you probably felt like like people were trying to like keep you safe but also probably like putting limits on you Did yeah you feel like that yeah i mean i was even like while i was going through pain i was still in college i was still doing a full course load damn and dude it was just like i need to take something because again like I, you know i would do these treatments and i would just be in my room for days, just tired, exhausted. I wasn't drinking water because drinking water made me taste the chemo. And I wasn't eating much because I wasn't drinking water. Like it was just like, I felt like disgusting and terrible. And I was in this dark room and I had all this work I had to do. And I just wanted to be able to be out in the sun, spending, you know, just some, even though it was by myself, it was really nice to be able to like disconnect and just be out and um, enjoy fresh air. Cause again, I was, I was just locked up in the room pretty much. Yeah. Did yeah. you have roommates or were you at home? <laughs> no, luckily. So I, um, my first semester in college or my first year in college, I lived on campus and then uh, my grandfather actually lived in San Antonio and he's like, you can come stay with me and save money. So he had an extra room and I, I was staying with him. And then I got the news that I had cancer and I was like, well, this is a uh, pretty good luck that I just moved in. Cause if I lived with roommates, you know, and had to pay rent, I don't think I would have been able to continue school. 
Um, yeah. I would have had to, you know, drop out, take a semester or two off, and then go back home. Um, so I was living with my grandpa, and you know, he really helped take care of me and you know, brought me food when I needed it, took me to appointments when I needed it. And, you know, he, my dad, he lives four hours away. He would drive up, he would drive, he would leave the morning of a treatment, pick me up, take me to treatment. And then I was usually sleeping during most of it. And then he would drop me off and then he would drive back home four hours because he had to be at work the next day. Like Holy he would make an eight hour round trip just to come be with me you know, during my chemo sessions, because he knew how important it was to have like, you know, support it and family. Yeah. And it was, you know, I really appreciated it. Um, That's beautiful. Because yeah. I'm a, like, I really get choked up too often. I'm getting a little choked up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. For sure, man. Uh, yeah, so important to have that support system. Just, it's amazing that your uh, dad was able to do that. Um, for you i mean i know that uh not everybody's so lucky so yeah but I, shout out to your dad you know? <laughs> yeah. oh man yeah um i know that uh you got a new shirt and uh, i would like to see your shirt oh yeah okay. what's your shirt all about there so it says sweet hey, always carry a book and it's actually from the uh pilsen community books that's amazing it's pilsen so there's a lot of activism happening in pilsen at the moment too there's a lady named tanya lozano she started something called healthy hood um and comes from like a long line of activists in her family uh tony lozano was like a big activist in the 70s i guess and uh so uh Tanya and Healthy Hood family are doing lots of cool stuff in Pilsen. And uh, it's just funny that it says always carry a book. And it's got like a little uh, little extra, a little extra something in there, a little eight cap. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, check out Tanya and check out Pilsen's. Uh, you said that's the community, Pilsen Community Library? Books. It says community books. Pilsen Community Books. Pilsen Community Books. Check out that store, shop local get you some learning and some new books <laughs> um we're we're winding down uh ac you got questions for scott uh i mean so many that i feel like we'll probably have to have him back for a part two <laughs> season, two. season two i didn't i didn't know that he had cancer until like right before you know this we went live and we were like chatting real quick so that's definitely something i would like to go back and revisit again in a part two. That's something I, I had no idea. Yeah. I will say kind of to go back to, you know, the props you were getting earlier, Scott, uh, my, my favorite thing with you on these shows, is like, we'll just be talking about something randomly and like, seriously, like whatever we're, we're talking about, you'll just, it's on screen. And it's like, uh, how we're like, you'll post somebody's link. You know, and it's like, like we just talked about that like two <laughs> seconds ago, and it's on screen. So, yeah. he's a magic man. Yeah, yeah. so helpful. Yeah, it's love, pretty cool. I love doing that because, like, it's I just love seeing y'all's reactions to it mostly. Yeah. Um, especially if it's like just a funny little video or like picture or something. Like, I, I love doing that type of stuff. Um, and goes back to like just being off the cuff and just flowing with stuff. Um, makes it so much more enjoyable. Yeah. I'm so excited for all the like percolating ideas that we've discussed and, and planning meetings and stuff for the next season. Uh, I look forward to doing some like YouTube all request music video hour or something like <laughs> yeah. that and maybe some karaoke and oh, things man. that uh, well, would just be fun for people to join in on as well. So keep hitting up the Discord, keep hitting up all the socials, keep hitting us up on Twitch. Yeah, and if anybody out there has any recommendations, please share them. Yes, indeed. We have such a blast with you on Sundays. Tomorrow show family. AC, Scott. Scott, thanks Aaron. for all your help all the time and uh, all your work in the mental health space. And yeah, we're very lucky to know you. We're yeah. very lucky to have had our paths cross and that we get to continue this work um, that... You know, Carl Evans has really uh, put 
a lot of inspiration into all of our lives and uh, ways that we can, um, I don't know, reframe what we were taught about our mental health. And uh, I am forever grateful, as I know you are as well. Our pets say hello. Our pets say goodbye. <laughs> we're, we're live from the treehouse. We'll be back towards the end of the summer. And uh, we'll give you lots more things to help you get through to tomorrow. Yeah. All right? Yeah. For now, uh, just when you got the strength, try and do something good for your community. Spread some love. There is far too much bullshit going down. So find uh, find something to do about it. Uh, yeah, don't just do there. nothing. When you have the strength, do something. Uh, you know, call out bullshit like white supremacy and homophobia and transphobia. Do that. Call it out. Help people feel safe people feel validated and accepted because uh, hey we're all on the same team we should be at least so um lots of love to everybody out there scott thanks yeah. for everything bud. real quick before we bounce uh please be safe and get out there and vote please it's uh it's it's gonna be one of the only ways on a lot of things so please get out there vote if you're not vote if you're not registered ah if you're not registered to vote please go do so um yeah 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 we can't do nothing we can't do nothing so love you all take care of yourselves and uh we'll see you soon all right. bye y'all thanks the bye. Show.